All right, everyone, get those hiking boots on. Today we are going to go from where I parked, which was not where I wanted to park, up to Sky Pond. That's the trail. We're doing Sky Pond today. The weather's perfect, slightly cloudy, no thunderstorms in the forecast at all, no rain. This is going to be awesome. And spoiler alert, we are not going to make it. So first setback was the trailhead which is Glacier, Glacier Gorge, was packed when I got there. I had a reservation at 8 a.m. I literally was the second car in line at 8 a.m., and the trailhead was packed. So I had to park a half mile away. Not a huge deal, only adds a mile to the round trip. Now you can see here on Google Earth, I'm showing you the approximate route. It was a little bit hard to find some of the trails on Google Earth through the forest, and so I had to kind of reconstruct them from memory. And we got through here up to Lock Vale, and this is where I had to turn around because of the first of two thunderstorms that were not on the forecast. And this is how far off we were from Sky Pond. So I made it a little bit more than halfway. The rest of the hike up to Sky Pond uh, was apparently also close to impassable due to snow and the uh, hail that came in, causing a nice slick layer on it. So when the first thunderstorm came in, I doubled back, went back to Mills Pond, milled about there, left when the second thunderstorm came in, and then went back to my car. Now here's the elevation profile. So even going up just to Lock Vale, it was a pretty significant hike. The hike's really easy up to Alberta Falls, but after that, it gets hard fast, and that's what we're going to see in this. So here's a half mile away from the Glacier Gorge Trailhead, I had to park and f uh, foot it up to the Glacier Gorge Trailhead. But nice views along that walk. Once I got up to Glacier Gorge, which we are at now, uh, the views up there were absolutely lovely. There were some of the uh, lenticular clouds above one of the one of the mountains in the park there. You can kind of see the wind. It was nice and gentle. Uh, there's a still. And for those of you who are new to these videos, by the way, I'm going to intersperse some still shots into the actual footage. So the trail continues, and it's really easy. Just steps up. Yes, we know what steps are. You don't have to point the camera at them. Bridges that are generally really easy to cross, some cascades, We'll come back to this cascade. That is not the right photo. I put that in the wrong spot. Um, those those cascades, that's the right photo. There we go. Yes, um, okay, I, I'm batting 500. So uh, after those cascades, this is some number of feet past them. This is basically what it continues on, looking like there are more cascades up here. And some of them are right next to the path or right under the path in this case. And they are pretty scenic. Here's a shot, probably out of place again. Uh, 15 millimeter lens for the photography staff uh, viewers. So chipmunks should not be that brazen, but people feed them. And uh, this is basically Webby award winning footage right here, folks. This is what's gonna win me that Webby. Uh, climbing up the stairs in the park and you can see and now running up the stairs literally while I've got the energy I love to run up the stairs or the boulders on these hikes and uh, usually I'm not doing that after mile three so this is what the trail looks like early on it's gravel really level well maintained and I gotta guess that here we are at a sign we have to have come we've point three miles are you kidding me? You, you kidding? I really thought we were like two and a half miles in at that point. So this cascade here, this is a very long series of cascades that I got to imagine is somewhat ephemeral. I'm not, uh, at least this level of flow would not be year round. It goes alongside the trail there quite a ways. And then this is what the trail looks like after that. Again, still really easy, well marked. These boulders and the cutout through the trees would make this really easy to do 
even with a decent amount of snow on the ground for those of you who are really serious snowshoers. But if you just want to see Alberta Falls or little rock gardens like this along the way to Alberta Falls, this is an easy hike to do. And if you have, um, if, if you are not into a moderate or hard hike, getting to Alberta Falls is definitely doable. So uh, we'll do some more shaky cam here and coming out of the, as the elevation increases, you go through these nice forests that are um, aspen forests that turn beautiful colors in the fall into conifers. And the conifers tend to be a little bit higher up. And then, um, so higher up here, we have a little bit lower flow in the Cascades. And there's a crossing here that's a bridge or on the way back, I rock hopped across this Cascade. You can see the rocks there make a nice path. And, but on the way up, I stopped to take a few photos. And uh, that is with the Pentax K1, for those of you who are curious. I took two cameras on this trip, the Pentax K1 and the Sony A7S II. I believe that's another K1 shot, I could be wrong. The A7S II does all the 4K video, like this captivating video of me walking right past the camera, not looking at it. Yes, I didn't look at it this time, nice. I'm getting so good at these. And the K1 was for stills. I also did a lot of stills with the A7S II. It has a good sensor. But at the end of the video, for those of you who come here for the photography portion, I'll show you a comparison of two nearly identical photos between the K1 and the A7S II. And you can see the difference in sensor quality between those two cameras. So more cascades. This Basically, so waterfall photography is one of my favorite things to do after a decade in California where there's no water and before that 20 years in Illinois where there's no elevation, I finally get to photograph waterfalls. So I literally every little cascade, I'm like, yes, yes, moving water, falling over things. This is so amazing. And so I stopped to photograph lots of them. And, uh, but waterfall photography is really rewarding and really fun and you don't even have to have like a, an amazing waterfall. Yeah, sure, Alberta Falls is gorgeous. Later on in this hike, Glacier Falls is stunning from the distance you can see it from. But a lot of these little cascades along the way, they've really yielded significantly better images and more interesting images because I, I can put the camera literally underneath them. So this is, uh, this is where that photo of the chipmunk was supposed to go. Uh, okay, great, great work. Anyway, this chipmunk was really brazen. It was the first of four that I came across that just begged, so don't feed them. So here we are getting photos of Alberta Falls. This is, no, this is not, this is it. Yeah, this is, this is Alberta Falls. Here we are. And, um, I'm betting some of my photos are out of place here again, just looking ahead in the, the video scroll, but that's okay. So Alberta Falls was really flowing and there were a lot of people there, none of them wearing masks. This is not Alberta Falls. I don't know which one this is. Don't be an insta idiot. Don't, don't, no, don't do things like this. Do not step on the edge of the cliff. Ah, oh, Hancock, this is, this is how you almost bite it on your hikes. But in seriousness, folks, that was a game of angles. Um, I was not standing on the edge of a cliff. My foot was on a, a rock that was along the, uh, the trail, and I held the camera so that it looked like I was standing on the edge of a cliff. Really, do not be insta-idiots. Don't do stupid things when you go on hikes. Don't go off the trail. Literally later in this video, I will point out a, a part in this trail where I did almost legitimately bite it and I wasn't even doing something stupid. Um, so hiking is something you need to do to pay attention. When you, you need to pay attention when you do it and you need to be safe, even especially in national parks, but even in national parks, because this, this is where that photo was supposed to go. Look at that. And this is actually me holding the camera over the edge. I'm not standing on the edge. Um, so, so don't do stupid things. But you can see that uh, if you caught a little glimpse of that rock, I literally 
was not standing on, I was literally just doing a camera angle trick. So anyway, more waterfall footage. I think I might have gotten some of these clips out of order somehow. Anyway, uh, here's more of, I think, Alberta Falls. And you can see a slightly long exposure sort of blurs the water. This is a shorter exposure, same waterfalls with the K1. The, the previous one was with the A7S II. And, oh, look at that, stepping on rocks. Yeah, that's the stuff, people. What, what the, uh, okay, I guess I had to fiddle with my shoe there. So, um, hikers, hikers, lots of hikers, almost none of them with face masks. So, at any rate, um, the trail after Alberta Falls starts to become a little bit challenging. It's not as flat, it's not, in most places, gravel covered. It does still have manicured stairs, but there's more of an incline and there are boulders in the path, which for me starts to make it really a lot of fun. Like stairs like this, if it weren't slick, I would literally be hopping from step to step just because I'm weird. And uh, I don't believe in leaving anything for the trip home. So the this is typical past Alberta Falls Trail. So if you're looking for an easy waterfall trail, Alberta Falls is a pretty good option. This is about the easiest that the majority of the rest of the trail up to Lock Vale is going to be. Apparently past Lock Vale up to Lake of Glass and Sky Pond, it's a very hard trail, even without snow. But um, the people who were coming back down the hill were telling me that between Lock Vale and Sky Pond, there was about a mile of knee deep post holing and some pretty slick areas where crampons were not required, but probably good for life safety. So at any rate, this is where the snow starts started to come in on the hike and we weren't even at that high of an elevation yet. So, and tree, nice, nice belly height tree there. So I make this look easy in the video, by the way, climbing underneath the tree. And it is, uh, it was not, not with a backpack filled with camera gear and water and two hiking poles. Uh, that tree was only about three feet above the ground. The views here start to get really incredible. If you can look through the trees, which is a little bit challenging to do, especially with shaky camera like this. I really really need a gimbal or whatever those things are called that take out the camera shake. I think it's a gimbal. Anyway, the trail starts getting really hard and part of the reason that I'm not showing you any of the stuff off to the side is one, there are trees. It's kind of hard to see past them. As you can see, that was coincidentally good timing, but this is what the scene looked like there, holding the camera up a little bit to take a picture of the valley looking out past those trees. That road that you could see there was the um, main road going up to Glacier Gorge Trailhead and beyond that Big Bear Lake and a bunch of the other trailheads. I think it's a big Big Bear Lake Road. I forget the name of all. I'm terrible with road names. So trail continues to get harder and in places it's not apparent where the trail is until you get there, especially like this where the trail's covered in snow. Now, fortunately, that snow was really hard packed and I was able to walk across it. But, th so it wasn't like some of my other hikes this year where I was post-holing pretty substantially. Those hike videos are coming later this month. Anyway, um, continue on and this is the easiest part of the trail for the rest of the day, right here, if I recall correctly. I think I do. It was a pretty exhausting day. All told, this day with not just the, the trail portion, which was 6.3 miles, but with um, everything else, the milling about, taking photos, according to Map My Walk, was 9.3 miles of walking. So it was a pretty significant day. And um, as you can see here, lots of trails, lots of people a handful of years older than me who are of the mind that coronavirus is not going to hurt them and they don't need masks. Thanks guys. It's awesome of you. 
So at any rate, um, that snow there, had it not been so hard packed, was waist deep. It was a pretty decent snow drift right there. The, and you can see here where the water coming out from the snow comes underneath it and it melts under the snow. This is one of the things that makes snow like this uh, tricky and dangerous because the water melts underneath it and that creates cavities under your feet. So not this hike, but one of the hikes later this month going up to um, Wheeler Lakes, I would be able to walk across snow in the morning and post hole on the way back when it got a little bit warmer because the snow underneath, even the exact same place as I had stepped, the density had changed and it could no longer support my weight. And, oh good, a sign, a sign. We must be like half a mile from Lock Vale at this point. There's no way we are, no. Oh my goodness. We still have a mile and a third to go. Okay, so post holing. So coming over the snow in these places, it changes over the course of the day. Now here it wasn't doing that so much because the snow areas were pretty much still in shade. But at any rate, uh, the water as it melts changes the snow underneath and that's what really causes you to fall through. There's generally nice crust on top of the snow, but it's the substructure that fails. And post holing in conditions like we have had this spring out here have been a real has been a real mess because um, on the Hancock Lake hike, which has the video will go live later this month, the um, water was so deep underneath the snow, which was in and of itself waist deep, that my boots filled with water and I ended up walking miles with ice cold water in my boots, which sounds like fun. Sounds like the a name for a really great country song, really does, but actually not that much fun. So this is a portion of the trail where it's along the side of, it, it's a fairly steep cliff. Like, I, I mean, if you lost your footing, you'd probably slide five, ten feet down it. You're not going to tumble to your doom or anything like that. But um, at the same time, in places like this, again, I like to walk on rocks that are embedded in the dirt because it's a little bit easier to maintain traction than on the dirt, and that's not a place I really want to fall. But the views from a place like this where it's a little bit more open and you're looking out over a valley are spectacular. And if I hadn't been using a 45 millimeter lens on my a7S II and had been using something that was suitable for catching those views, you'd have been able to see all that. A little bit further along, we continue through this conifer for, forest. Now, on this hike, I never made it above tree line because Lock Vale's under tree line, and that's where the first thunderstorm and first hailstorm rolled in. And I just said, you know what? Um, none of this was in the forecast. I don't need this in my life. I'm going to book it back down the mountain. But we haven't gotten there yet. So I'm spoiling the future for you, and I apologize. But this is what the trail pretty much looks like until Lock Vale, or at least the easy parts of the trail. It's apparent where the trail is, but there are lots of boulders, lots of roots. In this area, for instance, it's a pretty steep downhill to that creek, river, creek, I don't know. It looks like a river right now. It might be a creek in the summer. And there's less and less shade. Now then, of course, you come across little places like this where the water is coming out of the rocks. The groundwater is coming out of the rocks as the snow melts. And these are awesome for photos. Just watch. This was with the Pentax K1 and the Irix 15 millimeter. I think, I think this was, yeah, it was. And um, just places like that are really so much fun. Like I said earlier, because you can put the camera right there right next to the water. And even though that wasn't a really big little ephemeral cascade, it looked huge with the way that the wide angle lens uh, exaggerated the distance and the spacing and um, because it was p placed so close to that cascade. So I'll stop here and show you what some of the scenery 
along this hike looks like because it is magnificent. Uh, even the dead trees look neat. And later on in this video, we're going to take a look at some absolutely beautiful trees. I found what is so far the most beautiful tree I've seen in all of Colorado. Actually, the most beautiful tree I've seen in my life, period. Uh, and we'll take a look at that later. This is Glacier Falls. And you can't get all that close to it, but that doesn't mean you can't take good photos of it. It's just a different kind of photo. And it is still very pretty and very scenic. And this is what kind of photo you can take from it. Standing back, you get a nice sense of the area that it is in with the trees and the rocks and the sky. And so in the last two photos we saw, Glacier Falls and that little ephemeral cascade, that ephemeral cascade photo like just shoves you as the viewer into it. And then the second one takes a step back, Glacier Falls, oh my goodness, look at that. I... <sighs> All right, let's do this. The Glacier Falls photo takes a step back and it um, gives you a, a sense of place. So going up this gigantic snowbank, which was about 28 feet high and round about a 10% grade, was easy. Coming down it after rain and hail had formed a nice, hard, ultra slick crust on it, not so much. But going up it I had the opportunity here to show you a little bit of what is around. Now at the top, we can see Lock Vale starting to come into view. We'll do some photos here in just a minute, as well as a time-lapse video to give you a sense of what this lake was like when I was up there in early June 2020. I think June 4th, 2020 was the date I went. And so one of the scariest parts of the hike for me was up here crossing this little bit of snow where these two dudes are standing because I don't think you could see it in any of the footage that I captured but off to the right the snow has started to calve into the water there's a big crack in it and uh, I didn't know if I was walking on land or water but out on the island or peninsula whatever it is you get scenes like this with just some amazing trees really just wind whipped and just turned into beautiful trees by the harshness of the environment and wonderful scenes. Now, this is the time lapse I mentioned, done with the Pentax K1 in 4K. And you can see how quickly these clouds are moving in. This was, this is a, a second shot that I did to do a cloud trails and blurry water photo from the same location. I mean, in all, between getting this shot and that time lapse, I was only at that spot for about 10 minutes. So those clouds were moving quickly, and that was my first sign that things might not be going according to the weather forecast. But I wanted to continue on anyway. So I went across the path that would have taken me up to Skyvale. Here we are going back across that little arm of snow over the water or land, I still don't know which. Very, very scary walk, because I was 100% certain I was going to fall through that into frigid water and drown but I didn't. It was just my hike, hiking hypochondria, or whatever you want to call it, kicking in. Oh, look at that dust spot on the sensor. Oh, and you know what? I didn't know about that, so it's going to be there for the rest of this video. Oh. And it's going to drive me nuts. So this is the easiest part of the trail after Lock Vale going up to Sky Pond, apparently to, according to everybody who's coming down. The people coming down who started coming down during the thunderstorm and who were just booking it out of the mountains did not even bother to take their crampons off. So there were a bunch of people coming down with boots and spikes, not, not the, the yak tracks, not the chain type things, but the legit spikes. And apparently that was required much beyond this part right here, which is again Lock Vale, to be able to proceed safely. So these, these photos here, what I did with this one and the last one like this was I took a series of 40-ish, maybe 80, I forget exactly how many photos, in rapid succession, minimum amount of time between each shot. And then in Photoshop CS6, I opened up the stats 
uh, function. If you have the extended CS6, you've got statistics. And then I merged them all with mean blending. And that gave me those really awesome uh, cloud trails as well as super, super smooth water because the mean, um, it, it averages out all of the individual little waves in each one of the photos and just gives us that smooth water. Here I am kicking the snow to make steps for me to climb up because I was still of the mind at this point that I was going to go on and make it to Sky Pond because yeah, the clouds were dark gray and yeah, they looked scary, but there hadn't been any thunder yet. And so I just kept going, slid down this hill, which was a lot of fun, except for all the snow in my pants. And here we can see we're getting to Sky Pond. This is where it started to rain and hail. And, um, oh my good, did you seriously just touch the lens with your shirt, with your dirty shirt? Oh gosh, okay. So anyway, actually, I take it that back. This is after it started to hail and I was charging down the mountain. I got back down to the fork from Mills Lake and Lock Vale, and this is going out to Mills Lake because the thunderstorm had passed, the rain had stopped, and I got to do an awesome bridge like this. There is no way this is going to end badly. Like, seriously, there's that's such a... that It's not wet, it's not icy, it's not narrow. I'm not carrying a bunch of stuff, and I'm not tired. There is no way I fall into this. Uh, right? Right? Let's hope not. I'm Okay. So, yeah, nope, nope, I just made you think I did. I didn't actually fall in. But I'm also fortunately smart enough not to go back out on that bridge and take a photo, right? Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take a photo. But I'm going to leave my backpack at off the bridge. I'm not going to take that because that would make it, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Seriously, ugh. I honestly don't understand how I make it back from these hikes alive. Okay, so I'm using the Pentax K1 and the Irix 15mm here, and I took a standing up photo, decided I didn't like it enough, so oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> All right. I did that. I really did that. So I held it down lower, tilted the screen out so I could see how it would look. I was not able to handhold it long enough to get a shake-free image and blurry water, so I'm just going to set the camera and lens on that, that little bridge, and you can see that bridge is no wider than the camera and the lens. It was really narrow. And at this point, it occurred to me I was going to have trouble standing up because I didn't know exactly where my backpack was, and I wasn't 100% certain that I could stand up without it getting caught on that railing. And also, I only had one foot on the bridge. So um, if, just always remember to have a strap for your camera because, you know, you don't want to drop it. And somehow managed to do that and, and looked at all my photos on the way back just to make sure I didn't have to do that again because I did not want to do that again, I won't lie. But was it worth it? I'll let you be the judge. This is terrible. Why did I let this go on so long? Okay, so that's the standing up photo. Which I actually kind of have a preference for. The trees are a little bit more bolt upright and I like the shape of the water more. Here's the one that was literally right at water level well, on the bridge and you can see that the water is almost too close to the lens. It really dominates it. It's a very dramatic photo and I, I don't dislike it. Um, but at any rate, the trail onto Mills Pond continues basically like this. It's a little bit easier than the trail to Lock Vale. There were places where there was snow, but it wasn't as bad. It was pretty well manicured in terms of it being flat generally until we got to the pond. There were good stairs and um, uh, there was a lot of well-packed gravel. So this probably right about now, maybe in another couple weeks as of when this video went live, let's say late June, uh, 2020 would be a really good trail to, to hike. Now they haven't taken all the downed trees out of the way yet. So we're just gonna step right over this one. Yep, there we go. And uh, you can see this is easy going. And again, this is one of those places where I'd love to show you more about what's off to the side, but there's just not that much to see. It's all trees. It's beautiful and 
the sound of wind in trees is wonderful. It's relaxing, it's meditative, it's very calming, unless it's accompanied by thunder and hail, and it's very strong wind. But when it's just a gentle breeze, it's really very nice. And this is about the worst of the trail when I was there, this little snowy patch. I think I post hold a couple times in here, but nothing too bad. Um, I don't think anything more than ankle deep. And then the trail really starts to open up and, and gets to this area where this, this rocky plateau, beautiful aspen tree that's just sort of out of place. You can see some of the views here. I don't know what this photo is doing here. This is way out of place. Um, this is also out of place. This is Mills Pond, Mills Lake. But here's that area where I came across what is the single most beautiful tree I have ever seen in my life. Not that one, not that one, not that one. Oh, back there, in the back. Um, no, turn to the left. You know, I'm just gonna show you pictures of it, okay? And that's it. Yep. So that's the tree. That is, it is amazing, this, this tree, how beautiful it is. It's just, from every angle, it's so nice to look at. It's, it's wind whipped and it's been hardened by the weather and, and even the foreground, it's just gorgeous to look at. And uh, I think there are a couple more angles here and then a couple more later in the video. Yeah, this is a side where you can see how it's grown into the rock and uh, a little bit of the shape of the rock leading to it. And now that's a tree that was off to the left of it in a couple of, uh, and you saw it, might've seen it in a couple of the other photos. You can see the valley behind it. Standing next to that tree, which is where I am right now, you can kind of see around what the scene looks like. And I had turned the camera off when it happened, but as I, I turned to step back, now I was not actually that close to the ledge, I was holding the camera way, way, way out in front of me. I just want you all to be very clear on that. But as I, this is way out of place. As I turned back from the ledge, uh, my foot slipped, and no, actually, this is exactly in the right place because I almost fell down into that waterfall, which would have not been a survivable fall. So just so you guys know, even in places where there is sure footing, it is and can be dangerous. So when you are out hiking, when you are in national parks or hiking anywhere, don't take stupid risks. I know from the camera angles, it looks like I did, I did not. Um, kept one arm on that tree to balance myself and use the or to, as an anchor and held the other one use the other one to hold the camera way out in front to get better views and still my foot slipped and I um, was able to regain my balance but it was a scary moment so going further up towards Mills Pond we're almost here now when we get to these two bridges and I gotta imagine a couple weeks like maybe right now, maybe in a couple weeks from now, as of this recording, that that other bridge would also have water going under it. This seems like it's probably not peak flow for those cascades. The um, Mills Pond Trail did not get less snowy. The snow here, even though it was in the 50s, or upper 50s, low 60s the day of the hike, was really holding on because in the shade it was not as warm. And it was also really well packed from people snowshoeing and hiking in the, the winter to get up through these trails. So some of that snow is gonna take a little while to fully melt. And you can kind of see what it looks like here. And that's me kicking the snow to make stairs so I can go up the snow covered part of the trail here. And again, not easy going. You can see some of the post holing that are, had already happened. On my way back from Mills Pond, literally, 70 minutes after I took this footage, I post hold in a few places along this section of uh, trail. So the snow conditions were changing pretty dramatically even as, um, uh, even on the day that I was recording this in a fairly quick period. Now we get up here and this is 
the last bit of trail going up to Mills Pond, Mills Lake. I keep calling it Mills Pond, and, and I think it is actually a lake. The technical definition, if I remember correctly, of a lake and a pond is that a pond is a body of water where sunlight can reach the bottom, and a lake is a body of water where it cannot. Um, one of my roommates and a good friend of mine from college was and is now, he's a river hydrologist, and when he was studying uh, lacustrine environments, that was what he told me the definition was. I assume it's correct, I'm not a scientist. So Mills Lake was, for me, one of the highlights. I think the photos I got at Lock Vale were a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more earth porny, but the time that I spent at Mills was more enjoyable. I found it to be a little bit more fun because there's all these open rock spaces. There, was, there wasn't as much snow in the walking area, so it was easier to walk around it and mill about. <laughs> oh, goodness, I'm so funny. And take photos of different things. And it's also a very scenic pond. The mountains in the background here, I also found to be a little bit more picturesque as mountain backdrops. Now again, I want you guys to know I was not walking on the edge of that rock. I had the camera held way, way, way out to my side. Um, and I also have a little tripod that I take on these things. So I was holding the tripod so I would even have an extra about eight inches of camera overage. Uh, here is Mills Pond. And this is right there at the point where the uh, log jam is at the the exit for the water some other random people at the pond at lake lake I keep saying pond it's a lake and I want to show you two photos here to show you how different a a small change in composition can be when taking a photo I don't know about you guys but I like this one a lot better it's a little bit simpler the tree and the other one I find to be really distracting and since we're here at the end of the hike, everything else back is was just stuff we've already seen, so I didn't even bother recording it. I'm just gonna share with you a bunch of photos that I took along the way. These are all from Mills Pond. You can see the water is amazingly clear, as is the case with Rocky Mountain National Park Alpine Lakes. And Alpine Lakes are a place where it is hard to take a bad photo. You've kinda gotta try. But um, even if you're not taking a picture of the lake, some of the surroundings are really beautiful. There's always lots of really interesting deadfall trees with really good character. And, um, and I found, interestingly, that a lot of the shots I was taking, because of how tall the trees were, worked better in portrait orientation than landscape. But let's take a look now at a couple of very similar photos of the same scene. And let's take a look at how different compositions and different image orientations affect the scene. So this is that same shot, but I was a few steps to the, to the left and I changed it to portrait orientation. This is that exact same shot in landscape. So when you are composing shots, just think about whether you want it to be portrait or landscape, whether you're looking to capture more of the sky, emphasize the height of the trees, or if you want to capture more of the left-right space. And it's all up to you. These are just creative decisions. So this is a shot I want to compare two images. This was taken with the K1, and this was taken with the A7S II. Same exact set of cascades, and I'll let you be the judge as to which one was better. But um, there were some, there's some great detail in that K1 shot. Some other uh, wildflower and cascade shots along the way. Now let's close with some chipmunk shots here because they are super cute and super baggy. They should not be this unafraid of people. Don't feed the wildlife. Please don't feed the wildlife. This should not happen. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for joining me on this hike. And uh, we will try again later in the year to make it to Sky Pond and uh, hopefully when that happens there won't be any thunderstorms and we will actually make it all the way there take care everybody and hike safely you are more important than getting a few extra likes on your social media feed